Hey everyone! No, no, you mean not on there. You unlock things. Cheeky girl, this little bugger. Hey everyone, it's Lewis, and this feels really weird speaking to a camera again. It's been two years since I've made a video. To be honest, a lot has happened in the last two years. I moved from Brighton to Portsmouth and moved into a little pink house with my girlfriend Jo and our two cats. Three months ago, I had my trans lower surgery. All of which I'm sure is very vlog worthy content. I guess I'm just really wanting to be creative again and put myself out there, but also coming back with a very important message and story that I think is worth sharing with you all. Before I get into that, I just want to let you all know that all my social media has been hacked. So anyone following me on Facebook might have realised there's a lot of absolutely shite videos going out there. Hack off, you bloody hacker! I am talking to someone from Facebook, so I'm really hoping to get the page back. But in the meantime, just don't engage with the videos. Like, don't give this person any views or attention. I'm still on Instagram. You can follow me there. So now from the virtual world into the real world. I'm going to try and tell this story without like loads of crazy editing. I just want it to like be, you know, from the heart and tell you exactly what happened. Me and Joe were out on Portsmouth Pride weekend. I think this was the 22nd of June. We'd been out for a few drinks. We were walking home and a guy approached me and recognised me from the videos. I mean, I was a bit tipsy, a bit drunk. And he said something along the lines of, oh, you do the videos, you know, it seemed quite friendly. But then the next minute I turn around and one of his friends, one of this group of five lads, was having a go at Joe. He spits in her face and starts grabbing her and being really aggressive with her. He just wouldn't let her go and there was bruises all over her arms from this so that's proof of that and I stood in front of Joe and I said what are you doing I said walk away like this is a girl um be the bigger person and then he punched me straight in the face so square on in the face and I had all blood on my nose and stuff I was quite like shocked I stood stood back and then this continued so I tried to get in front of Joe again he punched me again and then at this point, I was obviously like, you know, seeing Joe getting this abuse and the fact I've been punched twice already. I just, I've never punched anybody in my life before, but I thought I've got nothing to lose. I'm trying to protect Joe. I went up to him and I, I punched him. I think that, that kind of shocked him. He stood back. But as soon as I did that, two of his friends, one of which was one of the lads that recognised me from the videos, jumped on me from behind and were just kicking and punching me repeatedly. They had me on the floor. I just felt like they were gonna continue on like forever, you know? I mean, I could have died, like not to be dramatic, but I actually could have died. I remember being on the floor and looking across the street and seeing that the lad that was attacking Joe originally had pushed Joe, he pushed Joe onto the ground and I saw her fall onto the floor. But I stood up and I said, look, I said, I'm transgender and if you carry on, I'm going to report this as a hate crime and the police will take this really seriously. Now, I said that to get them to stop because I just thought they were going to continue until I, like, you know, could have been dead. I never like to use being trans as a reason for anything. I mean, I don't even see myself as trans. But as I said, one of them, if not more of them, did know me from my videos. One of the reasons was sort of known is for helping trans people. So it's very likely that they did know. Um, he looked me straight in the face, this guy, after I said that, and just punched me again. And he kept punching and punching me. I went down on the floor for a second time. The only reason a lot of them stopped was because two people came out of their house that had heard it and um, they all ran off. So they obviously knew they'd done something wrong. They all ran down the street. Me and Joe called the police there and then. A witness actually called the police first and then we called the police. Nobody showed up. We were sat on the curb waiting for 40 minutes. We just went home. Um, obviously in shock and a couple of days later my jaw was still absolutely killing me and I went to A&E and it turns out that I, I'd completely or they'd completely snapped my jaw on the right hand side and I had to go in for surgery quite a major surgery it was really complicated they had to put a metal plate in my jaw I had to have my teeth wired together for eight weeks I couldn't eat any solid foods it was really horrible I've got a scar 
from where they did it. I, I do heal quite well from scars, so I don't know how well you can see this, but um, on my sort of ridiculously bright light trying to flatter my face probably doesn't help, but it is there. Not that I really care about the scar, but it's just the sort of emotional effects of it. And Joe was covered in bruises. Now we did report it again to the police, and they seemed like they did everything they could. Um, you know, they found the five people, despite there being no CCTV. However, they've interviewed them all and they're all telling their version of the story that Joe started on this lad and then next thing I come up to him and that he was startled and it was self-defence. So this lad that is saying it was self-defence has admitted to punching me twice out of self-defence, but they're saying that no one else um, punched me or touched me. The problem is, is that the guy that did punch me and is admitting to punching me first, this might get a bit confusing, the guy that started on Joe, that punched me twice to begin with, he's not the one that broke my jaw. Even he's admitting to doing that, but he's saying it's self-defense. It was the others that had me on the floor kicking and punching me that broke my jaw. And it's classed as a GBH, grievous bodily harm. But because no one is admitting to doing that to me and because there's no CCTV to prove it, the detective has said it can't go to court. The case just can't go any further because as well, it's five words against two. Me and Joe were the only ones that came out of this scrap with bruises, a broken jaw, you know, with injuries and the rest of them di didn't have a mark on them. Isn't it ridiculous to say that it's five words against two? I mean, now also the police were quite quick to say that they didn't think this was a hate crime. They said if it was a hate crime, the lads would have said something along the lines of, oh, you trans or something like that. That's ridiculous, really. I mean, they're not going to say, oh, I'm going to punch you, you trans. I did go along with the fact that I didn't think it was a hate crime either. I don't want it to be, to be honest. Like, I mean, you know, I'm not... I don't see myself as trans. Why would I want that as the reason that we both got attacked? It might not even be the reason, but I'm just telling you the facts. It was Portsmouth Pride weekend. One of them knew me from my videos. I reiterated that I was trans halfway through the attack. I obviously only got a, a set upon once I tried to protect Joe, but people have made a good point of saying, well, how do you know they weren't trying to antagonize you by attacking Joe? And also Joe, as straight as she is, looks quite gay. She's full of rainbow, uh, always got bright coloured hair. She stands out. Whether, whether it is an LGBT hate crime or not, surely it's a hate crime against people that perhaps look a bit different. And if it was reported as a hate crime, it would have to go to court. And this is, this is the sort of point where we can try to appeal this. I mean, we could even change our statement. We could say, look, actually, we, we this is a hate crime. It's a really tricky one, and I just wanted to tell you all the story. Maybe you've got some views on it. Maybe you can help us in this. Not only did my jaw have to be operated on, but it then delayed my lower surgery, which put all my work timings off, and I lost loads of money because of it. And it was just a really hard time, and... The fact that they just get to walk free for doing that to somebody is is disgusting in my eyes. I feel like I've not got much power in this other than to tell the story, to put it out there publicly. I think the point that I want to make is that there needs to be more awareness on what can class as a hate crime because people are afraid to report things as hate crimes. You know, they don't know if they're going to be taken seriously. I, I know that I certainly had no idea what classed as a hate crime and what didn't. And maybe if I'd had a bit more information, a bit more support behind me, maybe I would have reported it as a hate crime initially. But this is what you get for not wanting to be dramatic. If, if someone else was telling me this story, I'd say never feel embarrassed or like you're being dramatic for standing up for something you believe in. I'll end this on a slightly lighter note, which is hard to jump from that to, to, to light. But I wanted to say that I will be making more videos 
I want to do little tours of the house, the cats. I'm doing a lot more art and I've made a comic called Bug, which is based on me and our cat Emerus, who we call Bug because he looks like a little bug. They're all getting posted on my Instagram account, so please go check them out. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll speak to you all very soon. Subscribe. I hate speaking like a YouTuber. Okay.